I'm coming right out of the gate swinging on this one. I don't think that we have lived in a time where vision has killed more games than we are living in right now. Now I have talked about this many, many, many times on this channel, and quite frankly, it's getting a little old, but unfortunately, it's just what the industry keeps doing, so I will probably continue to talk about it for many more months, potentially years more. And what really struck this off, what really hit this out of the park for me, was the new Grey Zone Warfare update roadmap with the day-night cycle and all of the phases that these guys and gals are bringing out out for Grey Zone Warfare Madfinger games. Now, let me start by saying that I fully believe in the passion and dedication that this team has for their game. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt it for one second. I do believe that they are fully committed and dedicated and passionate about their game. However, and what I do firmly stand by, is that those things do not warrant selling a game in 20 2024 or any year after, quite frankly. Those things are virtuous and admirable when you are creating a product that you want people to have, yes, but they do not mean that that product deserves to come to market. What does deserve to come to market is something that has been fully fleshed out, fully optimized, has been tested rigorously and optimized so that it is fully playable and ready to go from day one. Now I have said this time and time and time again on my channel and it's an echo of so many other creators across YouTube, especially creators that focus on early access, alpha, beta, upcoming content, and that is that early access gaming destroyed the underlying fabric of gaming. And what I mean, what I specifically mean by that is, is that when I was young, it wasn't out of the norm for there to be alpha and beta tests for games. Companies opened their games to be alpha tested and then to be beta tested, and then they would shut that game down, completely remove it from the marketplace, work to get it to a polished point, and then release it as a finished product, not a free to play product, not a not an early access bundle battle pass product, not a micro transaction as we carry on our eight year development cycle product, but a fully finished product. Fast forward to now and the formula has completely flipped on its head. Now all someone has to do is get their product to what they believe is an appropriate point for it to be pushed to market, call it early access, charge whatever they want for it, and then push it to the public with little to no reprimand or recourse unless there's just a, a huge backlash over it, kind of like Concord or maybe even the day after. And that's it. They promise us all of these things. They give us all of this vision and this passion and this determination and this commitment. And they lay out these two, three, four, five year plans and this is everything we're gonna do, but we're gonna nickel and dime the shit out of you along the way because you are paying us now to test our game. So they're actually not paying beta testers, QA testers, like a major studio would. And I, I don't wanna hear anything about how small indie develop comp development companies, man, and the money and the resources. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Anyone with a decent rig, enough time, and enough people can sit down and access nine out of 10 of these softwares for free or on a month to month basis and develop any of the things that we are seeing at a comparable le level or better. So that is not an excuse. It's an industry wave, an industry standard that has been adopted and accepted by AAA studios alike. It's not just indie developers as a way to get people in and then to constantly have that funnel, that hose suck in just a little bit out of a, out, at a time out of every player's pocket for what's coming next, what's coming next, what's the next update, what's down the pipeline, version 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and enough is enough. Now I could go on and on and on and on and on on a 
rant hours and hours about all of the ways I feel about this and about all the different games that live up to this and are quite frankly just an abysmal part of the gaming industry as it stands now. But I'm going to focus on two key players because they're new and they're relevant and they are what a lot of people are currently talking about. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Grey Zone Warfare uh, just had, you know, a major update announcement. They did a live stream on Twitch and they laid out their roadmap for what's to come. Now, I'm not going to break down every single thing that was talked about. Uh, I'm sure if you've kept up with the game, then you're aware of most of it by now. But I am going to go over uh, the timeline that they posted for everything, beginning with the fall of 2024 update Night Ops. Now, in my opinion, big whoop de fucking do. You're making it dark outside. That's fantastic. It'll probably be hard as fuck to see. And everything that makes the game clunky and unplayable will be 10 times worse than it already is. And I know that some people have been successful at playing this game. I get that. For the vast majority of people, however, the game is next to unplayable. I haven't played the game in quite some time. The last time I tried to play it, and I did give it a fair shot, played it on multiple occasions after several hot fixes and patches were pushed. The game looked like Minecraft when I opened it. It probably took five to seven minutes for everything to fully render in and for my character to be able to walk around the map without it dropping 10, 20, 30, 40 frames and I by no means have a cheap system. Apart from that, the gameplay itself is just not fluid at all, man. I say it time and time again. It's one of my favorite ways to describe a game. Fluidity, fluidity, that silky smooth transition between combat, running, gun mechanics, menu actions, all of it. Very few games achieve that level of fluidity. And this game does not even come close. It's janky as hell. For some reason, mechanics that should be day one basics are left out of the game, which is something that Battlefield is now leaning on as a selling point for their new game, as if it shouldn't have already been in there from the beginning and never taken out to begin with in the first place, but the game just doesn't feel good. It does not feel good to play and it doesn't run well. It doesn't run well at all. I don't want to have to wait for a roadmap update so that I don't have to hold down the character lean button so that I get a toggle action button. Same thing for sprinting. I also don't want to have to stop my sprint if I change directions and then have to reinitiate my sprint. It's a dumbass mechanic and it makes the, f the game feel like shit. It's stupid. It should have been there from day one. And quite frankly, everyone knows that Grey Zone Warfare Madfinger Games released the game obscenely ahead of schedule, 20%, this is all, their own words, 20% completed as a game, charged $29.99 for it, I think, something like that. Everyone knows that decision was made because it was in the height of Tarkov and Battlestate games releasing the unheard of edition where everyone was abandoning and boycotting Tarkov and they were under the microscope in the fire in the shit. Grey Zone Warfare dropped conveniently enough and they sold a shit ton of units. And now where we are is the fact that Grey Zone Warfare has no player base, less than 10,000 concurrent players at any given time, and a two year long roadmap starting with Night Ops. Great, it's dark outside now. From there, we're moving on to Dark Revelations. And then we're going to Elite Operator and Battleforge, Shadow Strike in the fall of 2026, Rising Tensions in 2027, and then Update 1.0, which is where the big red area of the map opens up, Ground Zero. And I would imagine that that would be 100% complete, correct? That's what I'm thinking. The problem is, is this is a two year timeline. And I'm not saying that developers shouldn't be given time to develop the game, of course. And again, I don't have any ill will or distrust or disfaith in the development team's passion and drive to do it. The problem is, is this should have been the timeline and the roadmap for the development team before the game ever made it onto a person's machine. And that's where we are in this industry right now, especially when it comes to first person shooters. 
Now to step off of Grey Zone Warfare's neck for just a second, Forever Winter is on the horizon. If you haven't heard about it, check it out, look it up, Forever Winter. Highly anticipated game has been getting a lot of buzz online, and it's a cool concept. You know, sort of your typical extraction style, looter, shooter, you got a guy's got a backpack and meds and throw it on. We get it, we get it. But this one has a unique twist, it's got a unique setting, visually it looks pretty nice. And you're not really the main character in the middle of this war, you're more of a of an observer who's just there to kind of clean up and do what you can. But I've been following it and we're approaching early access and I've been seeing more and more and more and hearing more and more and more that this game that they're going to release for I believe like 1999 is just not ready. It's not there. And you've got plenty of people who are always for whatever reason on the early access bandwagon train. I have no idea why. It is almost unfathomable how many early access games we've gotten over the last five years that were absolute horseshit games that tanked that went nowhere that were buggy as hell broken abysmal pieces of trash because that by in large generally speaking is the early access market from beginning to end it just is it is not acceptable in 2024 2025 where we have an exceeding abundance of of technology and resources to be producing pieces of trash like this and putting it out on the market for sale. It's not excusable. It's diminishing the quality of work that everyone is expected to produce. And it's trickled over into the AAA space twofold, threefold. I mean, look at how many AAA titles now have released that were just awful. Battlefield 2042, an abysmal failure. Call of Duty, that has just rinsed and repeated the same half-baked trash for years. Apex Legends is on its 23rd season. We get it, right? We get it. It's corroded the underbelly of the industry when it comes to first-person, third-person, battle royale, extraction shooters, looter shooters, whatever you, whatever shooter you're into, it's fucked it all up. And it's not acceptable. It's not excusable anymore. Developers should be held to a higher standard than that considering how much money this industry generates. Forever Winter is set to release. And as far as I can tell, it's gonna release to mostly negative reviews. It's filled with bugs, game breaking bugs, visual glitches, an unbalanced combat system. Yeah, I get it. Learn how to play the game, play the game the way you want to play the game but it's evident that the game is not well balanced that the game still has critical issues that break the game and render it unplayable just look up gameplay about what people have experienced in the game it's the same with gray zone warfare gray zone warfare as a vision and this is the overall point that i'm trying to make with this video gray zone warfare as a vision is a fantastic game Forever Winter as a vision is a fantastic game. Vision kills games. And the reason that it does that is because developers do not put vision up on the whiteboard where it belongs and leave it alone. They put it into the product that they're shipping to, uh, shipping out to market, pushing to market, and they say, here, this is worth $39 because our vision is in there. We're giving you vision with a microtransaction of vision. That's not how it should be. Grey Zone Warfare should have never released. They should have developed that game for another year minimum. But now the game has been out for six to eight months, something like that. And we're just now getting it to a somewhat playable state across the board. And we're getting a two year development cycle. I mean, can you think about how many games are going to come out in the next two years? Years that are going to compete with this game and it's going to continue to try to spend money to earn players and keep players and develop the game that should have been developed before it came out do you see what i'm saying here do you do you not see the trend of why these passion projects it's not only destroying the game and any hope for that game having success it's eroding the industry because of how low the bar has become so 
much so now that games that do cost 60 to $70 are delivering the same half-baked trash experiences. Now, I really do appreciate you listening to me rant and run my mouth. Whether you agree with it or not, quite frankly, I don't really care. Uh, for those of you who do agree, again, I really do appreciate it. But for those of you who cannot see how the early access side of gaming is absolutely fucking games, the quality of games overall, the production quality and optimization of games, you're blind. I mean, you're delusional. You're delusional. The amount of games that have released like this and in this state that we've had hype for and tons of videos about and articles and all these stupid ass interviews about how this is going to be revolutionary in the industry, man. It's bullshit. And giving an early access game the excuse that it's early access, bro. It's early access, bro. Fuck that shit, man. It's almost 2025. Develop the fucking game. Then release it. I don't want to ever see another damn early access game again if I had it my way. I'm sick of it, man. They go nowhere. Nobody wants to have to be a free, unpaid Q&A tester for a game that's released in a trash state and then follow it for the next three fucking years while they try to claw their way out of the hole they're in to inevitably just secede, to just liquidate to just say, you know what, we had a good run, guys. How many times have we heard that? We had a good run and we gave it everything we have. And we really appreciate all of our supporters. How many times have you seen that stupid ass message on Twitter? Right before an early access game closes the fuck down. Enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. I'm so passionate about this particular topic in gaming because it's destroying the quality of our products. Grey Zone Warfare's vision is fantastic. This open world jungle, lush, beautiful looking sandbox of, of all sorts of warfare opportunities. Forever Winter being this sort of future post-apocalyptic, you know, mechanized, whatever you want to call it. You know, you're in the middle of this heated war between raging and rival factions and you just sort of exist there as a nomad and outlander. It sounds great on paper. It really does. And I understand how difficult it is to produce in this day and age with 4K and, you know, having to account for memory and polygon count and all this stuff and just server infrastructure and networking and every aspect that goes into game creation. I get how difficult it is, but that's why you can't afford to rush your product. Because if you do that, under the guise of it being early access, so oh, it's okay, it's no big deal, people are going to leave. That's exactly what Grey Zone Warfare is undergoing right now. They're barely topping 7,000 concurrent players. People are not going to stick around to see your game develop for three years just to have small itty bitty little patches come into place that introduce shit that should have been there from the beginning, like night time and more loot in the map and the ability to toggle, sprinting and leaning. It's just elementary shit. It's elementary shit. And to see a studio like DICE talk about the new Battlefield, Vince Sempella, whoever he's with now, I don't know if it's DICE anymore, but whoever he went to, talk about how Battlefield was going to release with a scoreboard. A scoreboard. I mean, that's that's this is a, a multi-million dollar co conglomerate in the gaming industry. We're talking about them introducing a new game with a fucking scoreboard. That's how low the bar is. And that is directly tied to early access gaming seeping its infectious, corrosive ideology into the gaming industry that this shit was acceptable. And we ate it up and we paid for it and now we're paying for it in a different way. And that's because we're getting shit products. We're getting shit products. I'm gonna try to wrap it up there, guys and gals. Now, like I said, I, I didn't go into the specifics of the Gray Zone Warfare updates. I wasn't interested in doing that. This isn't a technical breakdown of everything the update is about. I wasn't interested in going into the specifics of the Forever Winter updates and the release. It's simply a video about the 
the fact that looking this information up, following these games, following the people who get their hands on these games, all of the things they report about these games, it never fails. The pattern continues to repeat and repeat and repeat, and I don't understand why anyone expects anything different. They show up with a bright, beautiful, golden, goose egg if you will with all of these brilliant ideas in it and what's inside man is just nothing nothing it cracks it crumbles it opens up to reveal nothing and that's what the this side of the industry has become. And enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. Again, appreciate you watching. I'm going to wrap it up there for real, for real this time. Uh, if you're interested in any more of my rants, reviews, news, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. Would love to have you as a part of the community. And we do stream three days a week here on YouTube and on Twitch. Links all over the channel, the description of the video. Throw a like on it. It is totally free. It really helps out. Uh, I know there are going to be a lot of people out there who disagree with me too. Uh, and I understand that. I understand early access gives you a chance to get your hands on a game and help test it. But that's not what we're here for, guys, okay? That's really not what we're here for. We are not here to pay a company to test their game for them. If anything, they should be paying us to do that shit. So that's just not what we're here for, man. Establish a team within your, within your own organization to do that for you and release a finished product. Release a product that's proper. Appreciate you guys a lot. We've got a lot of different types of gameplay on the channel channel mostly shooters but we do play a wide variety of games let me know in the comments what you think about this what you think about these games what you think about the pattern of early access as a whole i hope to see you guys online i'll catch you in the next video